In this video, we are going to talk about triangle mid-segments and their properties. A triangle mid-segment is a line segment joining the midpoints of two sides of a triangle. Now remember, a midpoint is the point that's exactly in the middle between two endpoints. So in this diagram, line segment MN is the mid-segment of triangle ABC because I have midpoint M and midpoint N and it's joined by that line segment MN. Okay, mid segments have some properties. Every triangle has three possible mid segments because it has three sides. A mid segment is always parallel to the third side of the triangle. I need you to memorize that. We're going to use that a lot. A mid-segment is also one half the length of the third side of a triangle. I need you to memorize that as well. These two properties we're going to be using over and over again. Another way to think of a mid-segment being one half the length of the third side is know that the third side of a triangle is twice the length of the mid-segment. All right, so let's use some of these properties. Here I have triangle ABC with M and N as midpoint, so that makes line segment MN a mid-segment. And I know that MN, since it's a mid-segment, is parallel to the third side. The third side is AC, so line segment MN is parallel to line segment AC, the third side. I also know the length of line segment in MN is exactly one-half the length of that third side, so exactly one-half the length of line segment AC. And I know that line segment AC has to be twice the length of line segment MN. Given this diagram and the fact that line segment DE, DF, and FE are mid-segments of triangle ABC, and this given information, find the length of FE, the length of BC, the measure of angle BDE, and the measure of angle C. Well, since we're talking about mid-segments, we need to remember that a mid-segment is always one-half the length of the third side, and it's also parallel to the third side. So let's mark up our diagram with our given information. We know that angle A is 50 degrees. We know that angle AFD is 45 degrees. We know the length of segment AB, or side AB, is 12. And we know the length of side AC, or segment AC, is 16. The first thing we're going to try to find is the length of FE. Well, FE is a mid-segment because they told us it is. And it is opposite side AB, which is 12, and we know that a mid-segment is one-half the length of the third side, so it has to be half of 12, so the length of FE is 6. Now let's look at BC. It is a third side, and it is opposite the mid-segment DF. So we know that a... Uh, third side is exactly twice the length of the mid-segment, so it has to be twice the length of DF, and they tell us on the diagram that DF is 7, so I know that the length of BC is 14. Now we're going to look at angles. So I'm going to redraw this on my paper, and I'm going to take up all this off of all this stuff and only put what I need, which are my angle measurements. And I'm highlighted that first angle they want us to find, which is angle BDE. Well, I know that a mid-segment is parallel to the third side, so I know that line segment DE is parallel to line segment AC. And when I have parallel lines cut by transversals, I've got all sorts of angles that are congruent, especially corresponding angles. The corresponding angle congruence theorem says all corresponding angles are congruent if the lines are parallel. And hopefully you can see that angle A and angle B, D, E are corresponding angles. So since A is 50, D is 50. 
not D, sorry, BDE. All right, now let's look at angle C, which is the next one they want us to find. And again, I know that side BC and DF are parallel because DF is a mid-segment and therefore corresponding angles formed by a transversal through these two are congruent and hopefully you can see that angle AFD and angle C are corresponding angles and therefore C must equal 45 degrees. Now, another thing you can do if you're struggling with this is only write down the lines that you need. So you don't have to copy the entire diagram. You could just copy down these two lines and the transversal that cuts them. So hopefully that makes it clear that those two are corresponding angles. All right, given that line segment M N is a mid segment of this triangle X Y Z. I want you to find the length of M line segment M N and the length of line segment X Z. Well, again, mid segments are half the length of the third side and they're also parallel to the third side. So when I'm looking at this, I know that the length of M N has to be half the length of line segment X Z. Another way to look at this is that line set the length of line segment XZ has to be twice the length of line segment MN. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't like working with fractions that much, so I'm going to use this second little formula. And I'm going to put my expressions into that. So instead of XZ, I'm going to put 7X plus 6. And instead of MN, I'm going to put 3X plus 7. Now, I put a star by this because you have to be careful. Since this is an expression, that too must be multiplied by the entire expression. So you must put it in parentheses and then distribute. And here we have 7X plus 6 equals 6X plus 14. I can't have variables on both sides of an equation, so I'm going to subtract 6x from both sides, and I get a one-step equation that I can solve and find that x equals 8. But they haven't asked me to find what x is, they've asked me to find the length of line segment mn. So I'm going to plug that 8 back up into the expression 3x plus 7, which is the length of mn, and I'm going to find that the length of mn is 31. And I'm going to do the exact same thing for the length of xz and find that it is 62. You will be doing several of these types of problems in your practice.